My mom told me not to talk to strangers on the internet, but I'm glad I didn't listen. We are the Certified Nunas, your sisters in the love of Asian entertainment. Hi, I'm Amanda. I'm Jesse. I'm Natalia. And I'm Sky. Today, we're going to talk about trot music. Yay! Yay. Um, we're going to get into that in detail, well, detail-ish, in a little bit, <laughs> but... Before we do that, um, is there uh, anything that people have been listening to that they're really enjoying or looking forward to coming out this month? I think last time we were talking about it, I was talking about how Saran just had an album come out and that PH1 had one coming out. I think it was like the next day after we mm-hmm. were recording or something. Um, so I've been listening to those a lot this past month. Saran's album, as always, perfect. Great songs, great vocals. She had like six songs on it, and three of them were collaborations, one of which was with PH1. So I quite enjoy that song. And one of them with uh, Yu Murray, also Ooh. fantastic. Yeah, just really good. Really good vocals, really good everything. It's always a good package. PH1's album, less perfect, in my opinion. Mm. So there, I, there's a half a dozen songs that I quite like on it but it feels again like Saran over half the songs are collaborations they're all with other dude rappers like other guys like there's no female voice on there anywhere which I always think is disappointing when if you're going to do that many collaborations like throw some female voices in there mix it up a little but also it felt like his voice got lost like, a lot of the songs didn't sound like I think of as a PH1 song. It didn't sound like him. It didn't, I don't know. Not that everything has to be cutesy or, or whatever, but, like, he's really, in the last year or so, put out a certain vibe. The songs weren't really doing it. Some of them are great. Like, there's a couple of songs, All Right and HYFR and um, Lights Out, all fantastic. The title track that he released was uh, Like Me, and that was cute and fun. I don't think I've ever heard him swear in a song before. Half these songs have swearing in them. Not maybe all of them are him. Really, maybe he was just really angry when he was recording <laughs> he was these. Just I think he because one out. of the songs, the swearing was him. The rest are all the collaborators, ah. as far as I could tell. And it's just like, I was listening with my son, who has also enjoyed his music, and all of a sudden it's bleep and we're like looked at each other in shock because we're like, oh, okay, it, this album's well, going to be like that, is it? All right. <laughs> like, and it doesn't make the songs bad. And for a lot of people, that's not going to bother them. But mm-hmm. for me, it just seems totally out of place for surprising. him. Like that's not what he usually does, not the style he usually has and I mean, he spent all last year making songs about how he likes to hang out at home eating, you know, chicken and taking naps on the couch. Like, that was his, his ah, he's one genre. Of us. He's one and of then, us. <laughs> like, the second song that he released off of this Malibu was basically about, like, being at a party, watching the girls twerking kind of thing. And you're like, what? We're like, 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 feel we like know you. you. We know the truth. You all lies. Party. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. It felt like a lot of the songs felt like they were songs that were maybe for like Chic or Jay Park or something. And he was trying to go more in that direction. And that's cool if that's what he wants to do. It just didn't feel like it wasn't what I expected. I think it's a little sad if you if you put out a whole album where half of the songs are collaborations, but your best collaboration of the month is on somebody else's album. Oh, that's that's sad. sad. And his <laughs> best collaboration is definitely the one with Saran. So that was unfortunate. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. Mini rant about TXT, because I've been listening to a lot of TXT this month. All right, well, well, hit us. Hit okay, us. There's, so they released their second song off of their mini album. Mm-hmm. put out the video for cats and dogs or cat and dog or whatever arguably the second worst song on the album <laughs> there are two or three really really good songs on this album if i had to rank them i would rank them nap of the star our summer and then 
blue orange aid, I think it's called, or blue lemonade. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. But like those would be my top three songs. Are those the three out of five that got videos and release? Oh, nope. for sure. <laughs> and it just tries that would be too easy. <laughs> because I mean, we're talking end of April. You're moving into the summer. You have a song called Our Summer that is a party bop. Why is that not what you're releasing moving into the summer? Like People love those summer great, bops. Like, come on. They do. Really fun, cute I think Sister lasted so long. Summer bops only. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Napa Star is exactly what it sounds like it should be. It's like an ethereal lullaby kind of sounds like somebody singing a lullaby to stars or something like it's just really pretty and unique no love. you're a new group unique is what you should put out there you should yeah hey here's what I have to offer that not everybody else is offering and I don't feel like that's what they're they're making what they're thinking think are safe choices but it's just boring choices like, and it's they like, already had a fan base they could actually not make do like, anything safe things and still people would be like well we have to follow them because we yeah. have to support them they're in the perfect position so safe I'm just so safe. It. i am following in my usual whatever <laughs> my usual i like the b-sides and yeah I guess I just continue to like the b-sides so yeah. if you've heard some txt songs and thought this isn't that you know, I'm not that into it. I recommend checking out the rest of the song. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I need <laughs> to do, I think. That, so. Yeah, I always forget to just yeah. listen to them. What about you, Jesse? What have you been listening to? Um, Yorishiko, or Shika, who is, like, one of my favorite Japanese groups. They came out with an album last month, and it's great. Uh, so I've been listening to that a lot. I really like them, and if you like indie rock, you'll like them. Also, I have to talk about... Kichel solo that came out old movie mm. because come on how long have you been waiting for Hichel to have so a long. solo Year, years okay I totally missed that what it's that it, it has it's it's starring the girl what was she in she was in um the my ID is Gundam Beauty she was the like best friend who was just trying to tie mm. every bridge everybody together yeah but it's it's a good song it's a ballad song but I he still has such a good voice. Like, legitimately, he technically has a good voice. Like, so yeah. I never understood why he's given such few lines. Because he really does, out of, like, the people who are the lead singers, he has the strongest and most actual worked-on voice. So I never understood why he just never got anything. Like, I understand when he's not in on a lot of it because of uh, his accident. He can't dance a lot. Yeah. So it's that's hard. But he still has... His vocal cords, you could put him on lines. He could just be standing there. Oh, well. Or even a solo <laughs> album, not just... Yeah, song. not just like a because random song. Also, uh, a girl that I follow on my Twitter, she mostly is a 2 p.m. person, but she talks about a lot of other things, and generally I like what she suggests. And she had been talking about really getting into this Japanese rock group called Bandmade. Mm-hmm. They're phenomenal. They're so good. It's this like four or five member female Japanese pop rock rock band that like play their own music and they have like some like geisha traditional Japanese music flair in some of their songs. Oh, oh nice, cool. fantastic! And I just, all I've been doing is just watching all their videos on YouTube. So I'm really excited to have found them. And then um, Spotify suggested something on my radar and it lo- I was I liked it and then I kind of looked into it and it's this girl group this k-pop girl group called Marmelo who I've never heard of and it looks like they just got on Spotify but they haven't had a song since like last year so I don't know if they're gonna continue to be a group because they seem like they're from a small company and a small group in general they're like a a, a girl group that like has rock influences and they play their own instruments too. It's, it's really oh, crazy. Cool. And they're also really good and they're, they're super young and you can tell they're from like a smaller company. So they don't have like all their stuff has very few views on it, but like, I genuinely like the couple of songs that I was listening mm. to. So I'm hoping what was, that what was their name again? Uh, it is Mar Mello. 
M A R M E L L O. And like uh, Spotify just put it on my radar. So if I, I'm oh, assuming, Spotify. Yeah, I'm just assuming because like the song that I like ended up really liking and the one that was on the radar like was from like 2018. So I just I'm, I'm assuming they just got onto Spotify and that's why it was on the radar. But they mm. like they were a pretty good group and I like I saw some of their live concert stuff and they were legitimately good and playing their own music so i don't know well I, well I, well i want them to succeed now that i know they're out there now now that you know they exist you yeah. want them to keep existing yeah basically yeah. i don't want this small little group to go away because they're doing <laughs> this, this they're doing some great things this small little group that could yeah <laughs> and then i was like reading stuff and they all like came together they they weren't like formed they just knew each other and then they formed the the, the group together it's like just, a aw. real group yeah and they do real like, band guys and it's not like you know i love dreamcatcher but it's like not japanese rock it's just like normal like indie rock too and like with a little bit of like pop because they are so they're like young 1920 young why are kids. they not already successful we need to make them successful know. now <laughs> So please go, well, I always, for these music uh, episodes, have, like, a YouTube playlist of everything we talk about or, like, everything I can find. I will put one of their music videos in that playlist, and everybody has to listen to it. Woo-hoo. Five times. Yeah. Totally well. <laughs> and, like, ten if you want. Maybe, like, add them to your Spotify so and that they... And if you like yeah. it, twenty. Yeah. yeah. Maybe yeah. put in favorites, you know, share it, tweet yeah, it. Yeah, tell, tell people you think <laughs> you like it. <laughs> I want them to do more. That, you know, like, and by listening to them on Spotify, they don't get paid, so. That's true. So, like, get that cheddar. You know what I mean? Maybe they're, like, th- maybe this is a good thing for them, because if it's on my radar, then it was on other people's radars. Exactly. Yeah. So, good. Yeah, that's about it that I've been listening to. I just got off crazy work, so I wasn't listening to a lot and couldn't listen to a lot. What about you, Natalia? Oh, boy. Well, <laughs> So, I've been listening, uh, okay, EXO has just this year just been gifting us with wonderful solo it's coming out just at us left, right, and center, so that's been all up in my biz. We got another one coming before he goes into the military this month, uh, Zhumin, or Minsuk, is putting out a uh, solo on the 9th, CBX just came back, like, I am getting fed, I am getting fed well, but, uh, If we're going to talk about what I listen to literally all day, every day while I'm working, it would have to be Super Junior D&E's new exploits. So good. So good. What I love about them, and I was telling telling this to my husband, is that every single song of theirs sounds completely different from, like, the last song they put out. There's no cohesive, like, feel to any of their music. Like... (laughs) Like, literally, I could play just a playlist of just Super Junior D&E, and if someone didn't already know it was by them, they would think it was different groups every time. Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> so, like, you never you never know what you're going to get, but it, they gave us quite a banger this time. Quite a banger. Um, coming out this month, what am I into? What am I into? Apparently, at the end of the month, we got GOT7 and then NCT127 coming out with some stuff. Apparently, Red Velvet's putting out a Japanese album at the end of the month that's pretty exciting and uh winner just put out a teaser we don't know much about it but it just said we're coming back like it was it was kind of aggressive i admit like a little bit a little bit like terminator like we'll be back <laughs> like winner return so yeah we'll see we'll see what what comes up there that's about it for me what about uh, what about you sky I stumbled across, and i'm I'm kind of confused on if in flying has released their Japanese album yet or not if they haven't it's going to be soon and they released a couple of music videos recently anyway to the songs the world is mine and pinhole i like both of them they're both very different but pinhole i just discovered today actually and it's it's kind of a different vibe from the other stuff and i really like it the world is mine i it was it was kind of cute and i always like their cute stuff so um in flying i i feel like i need to go listen to their entire discography sometime i haven't yet but i liked their older stuff which used to be pretty darn funny like they've done a couple of really funny mm. songs um but with Rooftop, they recently got really successful. They had been in the music shows for a while, and then somehow they rose back up the charts. Like, their song just kind of got more listened to. 
Mm. And then they got their first win. And that was a couple weeks, you know, a few weeks ago or yeah. maybe a month ago now. So they, I definitely have seen they went to Japan for a tour. They did a couple of really awesome medleys on their YouTube channel. One of a K-pop medley, which was really cool. One of them is a anime medley since they were in Japan. They wanted to do that and that was pretty neat. They did a Queen cover medley, which was awesome. So there's some really neat stuff out there about in flying. Yeah, I follow so two. Might- Two of them have a YouTube channel, like a comedy YouTube channel called Two Idiots, and it's actually like really funny. Where it's just like which the two ones? Uh, Chahyun and Jayun. I, I don't know. Um, are, are they, they the vocalists? Got, or are they the? I band? I couldn't tell you, but they just go around and do stupid stuff, like <laughs> together. Like they'll go, like they'll go do like, oh, we took a aerial yoga class for a ballet class or we tried the spiciest food here and it's so stupid and it's just such a delight it has a lot of it has like real big marvel energy to it if you know what Amanda <laughs> knows, Amanda knows what i'm talking about it's fun <laughs> nice. if you like sort of absurdist humor it's the one for you uh i've also been listening to bts's persona album because i actually got the physical mm-hmm. album finally so yeah, and they're not the time people will be listening to this, but the actual recording date, they're currently at the Billboard Music Awards winning an award, so good for them. Yeah, well, like, okay, yeah, we knew they were going to win. I don't know why everyone's acting like this. Is- <laughs> 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 like, it's yeah. a shocker. And I'm like, mm, we knew they were going to do it, uh, <laughs> but okay, like, don't, I'm not going to be the one to, like, ruin your fun tonight, I guess, but... We've been new people on Twitter, like, call <laughs> I think it was last year that people were saying, like, if you actually want to make it a competition, you have to have other K-pop groups in the category, because, like, K-pop stands just blow everybody else out yeah. of the water for yeah. those, like, those social whatever yeah. awards. Yeah, it doesn't even matter. Like, they could, like, not be BTS, and all the other fandoms will be like, but it's on a, a global stage, and we need to get them to, like, win. Yeah, exactly. So, well, see, everybody I, go. I feel like North American BTS stands wouldn't, though. That's because, true. remember, so many of them say it's not actually K-pop. Yeah. Like, girl. <laughs> We're yeah. not going to get into this, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I know. I'm always, like, I'm literally begging them to come for me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fine. They haven't come for me yet since last episode, so you're good. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I did have that one girl come for me this week, so she could be the harbinger. <laughs> More. You mentioned about stuff that's coming up, and I just saw on Instagram that Shimmy has a new song coming out, and it's coming out not tomorrow when we're recording, but tomorrow from when we will put this podcast out. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, I'm very, very, nice. very excited so far. Like everything has been fabulous. So. I'm super excited because Ladies Code is coming back mm. this month. Mm-hmm. And I love, love Ladies Code. And I've been waiting for a comeback for, like, what, three years now? It's so, been a while. It's been a while. Like, wow. yeah, yeah, they did a Christmas song this December. Okay. And, you know, they've Christmas done some solo stuff. Though. But, like, it's literally Christmas 2016 song. was the last Don't time they out. did a song. And I just... I need it because I love them so much. Christmas songs don't count. I'm calling it. That's not a real. Yeah. That's they not a real really, offering. No. But if you're really grasping, you call, you, you know. You take what you can get. I mean, yeah. Like, yeah. We got that in like a couple of solos. Like, that's it. <laughs> you're like, I need more. I, I need, need to be more. fed. I need like a beat beat. I'm going to take a moment to R.I.P. Hello Venus, by the way. They oh, got disbanded. Yeah. Yep. And somebody else. Um, Who is it from? Uh. FNC disbanded as well. Uh, shoot. Uh, Honey Street disbanded. Oh, yeah, that's right. Like, Never even heard out of them. Out of nowhere. Be it was real. Like, okay, we're bo- gone. Bye. And everyone's like, wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> so quickly. And it's just, yeah. Whereas, FNC hello, Venus, you can feel it coming. Like, yeah. yeah, like, Honey yeah, Street, yeah. it was like, I mean, they haven't had any releases lately. It's been a while. But they haven't even been been talked about. It was like all of a sudden, bam, you're like, wait, what? Hey. Yeah. (laughs) There was no even, like, talks of, like, contract. FNC, like, you know, FT Island's having some issues right now with 
controversies and other things, you know, stuff. And the space is CM local, Blue's all in the military and having issues with the stuff and the controversies. And you're like, you know, guys, you this will be a really nice distraction. Yeah, like I'll give you some you money. Have these <laughs> other groups, maybe you should distract people from you know maybe you should let them release music maybe you should just just thinking oh no we're gonna disband them oh okay that's a different <laughs> way to go but all right sure 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 I guess. Seems smart seems smart mm-hmm. so that was surprising yeah Not and you I were really gonna say to eric them, nom oh yes. eric nom's got a he's got a new release coming out this month sure. as well and you know his new podcast which is yeah. lots of fun to listen to. Mm-hmm. Lots of like back, <laughs> all kinds of information that sometimes people ask us that we have no idea. No about. idea. About Eric it. Nom has, has ideas about these things because he's actually <laughs> he's been backstage at these <laughs> concerts and at exactly. these shows. And I like that the show is is fun too, though. That it's like it's enjoyable. Mm. Eric but. Nom's a cool guy. Like he'd be fun yeah. to like hang out with. Yeah. So, Eric, since we know you're listening, you know, have buddy. Get, give us a shout out. We so, so <laughs> we would love it. Gave, gave you one. So, like, <laughs> like, to like, Eric. <laughs> we're all in this together with our free We're, podcast. we're open to collaboration, too, just saying. <laughs> yeah, if you want yeah, to like, if you, if you want a guest on our podcast, we are more than happy to make time. If you beg us, Eric. we will. Like, we're pretty free this summer, too, yeah. so time zones <laughs> don't matter. Like, we can fit you in, sir. <laughs> um, um, Henry's going to be coming back, looks like, so that's yeah. the whole album. Yes! Yes! Mm-hmm. Oh, Henry. You and he's got some, <laughs> devil. some variety show or something that he's doing with uh, the girl from uh, ACMU, with Suhyun from ACMU. Like, oh, yeah. They were just uh, all over the place with, like, they're doing some like family band busking thing or something. I, I wish I could remember the name of the show, but what they go do is they go to at least a, a season that I read about. They go to a different country usually, and they yeah they go busking, and it's kind of like starting over fame wise, like yeah from square one. You know, not going where people know you, but kind of using your artistic talents to reach people that know nothing about you really. Yeah, and they I also think it's just that. did that um that song, the little jingle for NBC with Fossa. Have you heard it? It's great. So like, the show, the show is called Begin Again, just to intercut. Oh. Brief. but no, they mm-hmm. did a. I did not hear the. Uh, it's like the like NBC like when you know they're like in between programming and they're like a little promo for the channel. They it's him and Hwasa because of I Live Alone. Like since they're both, you know, members, cast members, they did a little little song together, and it's actually very cute. Mm. I'll have to find the video. Yeah. Oh, Wiki Mikey, they're gonna come back. Is it is it Wiki Mikey or Wiki Mikey? How does it pronounce? Wiki Wiki. Mikey Mikey. Is that Wiki Mikey? Okay, like they're they're fine and all. I just think they have the stupidest name. <laughs> <laughs> I always I always get it flipped. I'm always like. Mikey, Wikey, Wikey. I, I can never remember which way it goes. And the thing is, I know like all their names and stuff. The fact that I get the name flip is kind of funny. Uh, one we. I, I'm looking forward to that. By the way, I don't really like the name of that one either, but I think the group's gonna be good. Mm. Their band, rather than one us, is the group. boy group version. Mm-hmm. Of which every time I see that one, I always think it's Onus. Yeah, me too. Yes. yes. I read it I, as Onus. In, in in my mind, I read it as Onius. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you read the one we I haven't Oni- even read it yet I don't I just, think I've even seen that name so probably probably Oni- <laughs> and I'll, give Oni- a little, I'll give it a little French spin like my background <laughs> Oni- uh, Oni- Oni- oh Pogbon's coming out with a single to like tomorrow like as whoa when we're recording this the second the one that she did with the other girl from uh, oh, Mamamoo. It's a good month. Oh, yeah. the month that keeps on giving. When is Brown Eyed Girls coming back? Do we, is so, it vague? It, it's vague. It continues. I think it's always just like constantly, you know how they always have the lists and then like at the bottom they have the like ones that aren't 
like dated. Like, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm staring at. <laughs> they just keep on like moving them. <laughs> the announced ones that are like they say they're coming back, but we have seen no proof no of this yet. <laughs> Like XID, like it, that's in there too. And yeah, I don't know. Their contracts end this month, so. Oh. Oh. <laughs> They're probably not gonna resign, and I'm gonna have to cry. <laughs> it's okay. I've been preparing. Uh, so to be awkwardly changing topics, shall we play a game? <laughs> yes. So before we get into the fun and good times of Trot, we thought, what would be a song that each of us thinks would make a fun trot song mm-hmm. which we came up with this just like a moment ago so that's why yeah. we're not yeah having these so... <laughs> lovely prepared answers i i will uh, uh put one in the hat oh my goodness my mind just went totally blank it was there <laughs> then it was gone <laughs> then it was gone unreal oh my <laughs> send well no. i was thinking before um some of the stuff that I liked when we were getting into Trot the most was the sort of collaborations with more like pop singers or mm. even there was a few that were like collaborations with rappers and stuff. And it was like, I like the way those two genres like fit together. Mm. So I was just thinking like, what have I been listening to lately? And I thought PH1 song Like Me is kind of like a, it's kind of a cute, sort of boppy song to begin with trotifying that would probably be pretty amusing pretty enjoyable coming off of talking about ladies code i think kiss kiss could actually be transformed into a really nice trot song because it already has kind of like a boppy like song that like it kind of warrants kind of the more guttural sounds and the like Mm -hmm. yodely type ups and downs that trot has and it's like fun Mm. i think it could be a good it could draw song for me i it's already a collab but it's just setting itself up for a trot revival that would be dancing king by exo and uj (laughs) the greatest greatest dancing album of all time of like the great dancing opus of all time uh (laughs) i feel like it would make a really great little trot uh cover as it were great song great song i can i can see that the dancing would be a little bit different for it then. I'm I'm thinking regular by NCT. I don't oh, know, it just feels like... that would kind of be fun. Because when I you said guttural, me it already has some of that in it. That or getting closer by seventeen to me either of those hmm. maybe. As you watch by seventeen would be a great uh, a great trot song. It has the energy would, of it. They that that outfit can even be that direction. It works. Suspenders. Hmm. Mm-hmm. always with them suspends. <laughs> well, that was our little game. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Yay. Just uh, going along those lines. So you guys were posting those videos earlier of that, like the game that yeah. or, or whatever on the one music stage that they like have their little, you know, Dad trotified concept. versions of stuff. And those are fantastic. Like the videos are hilarious and you can really see how those songs can be just bopped up a little extra, made a little. So, so to explain, there's there's this, the gag concert, which I'm not sure that's even a thing anymore. It definitely was for a handful of years. But there was this three three member group that would come that out and they would at first sing the song of a, of a popular idol group. And kind of do the dance correctly a little bit. And then there would pretty much be a breakdown. And then boom, it would be trot version of it. And usually the original group would be sitting in the audience. Yeah. So you can see the reactions. Mm. Yeah, it was pretty fun. I love how it just like starts at regular and then all of a sudden it's like trot. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like the beat drops and then boom, it's trot. And it's, 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 it's a good time. Like, to be honest, that's like, that's the best uh, surprise that we could ever hope for in our lives, really. <laughs> right. get nothing out of like researching all this trot music. It's those videos. Like, I think we've done it. We saw those. Yep. We know they're out there. We saw like the shiny versions of like trot in 2 p.m. It's great. Especially so, when they did girl groups. Pretty funny. For people who might be wondering who are not familiar with trot music, it is a Korean type of music. It's um, called trot because it's 
the shortened form of foxtrot, which is kind of the beat that trot music runs off of, which foxtrot's a ballroom dance. And it has a sort of simple two-beat rhythm. Although foxtrot and trot music do not actually show share any apparently any notable characteristics. I'm reading. <laughs> no, they no, they do not. Right now. They do not like. I guess maybe you could foxtrot to a trot song. Yeah, yeah. I don't Seem you know. Yeah. But <laughs> otherwise, it's not you know it's not ballroom dancing that mm-hmm. you're no. It's, it came it came out of the era like so it was during Japanese yeah. occupation that came out like during the 20s when foxtrot would have been a very popular dance at the time. Wikipedia says it, it's trot music is almost 100 years old now mm-hmm. and it's the oldest form of Korean popular music. So it's been influenced by many genres of music from around the world which you can definitely hear when you listen mm-hmm. to it. And it's and, fun. Uh, it is. It's fun yeah. and popular in Korea. If you watch K dramas, um, if you watch Weekenders, you've mm-hmm. probably heard trot music because a lot of them, the theme songs, like Mother of Mine right now, the theme song is definitely a trot mm-hmm. song. Or uh, if you uh, if you watch that music show where the woman who sings a more fatty came out and everyone lost their mind, <laughs> that's a trot song. <laughs> It's also yeah. like kind of the standard what you would probably hear if you went into like a a Korean restaurant or a Korean grocery store. Grocery store. Yeah, grocery it's store what you hear. Yeah. It's that very like it's high energy. Like there's very rarely a trot song that isn't like fun. high energy or fun. It like may have sad words, but like it's still fun. It's very like poppy and then it's very like yodely. So like <laughs> it's definitely a lot of like ups and downs and like different vocal techniques it when I first started listening to it what it made me think of was something like like the bonanza theme song like it Mm. was it has that sort of like country music Mm -hmm. but like pop jingle a a little bit of Bollywood thrown in there like it just you could definitely see a lot of these songs being like in a Bollywood dance number like they kind of have that here we go kind of feel to them yeah but yeah like it trot music is trot music you can't you can't define it by other forms of music they like sequins a lot too when it comes to the outfits usually the sequin blazers come out Mm. and backup dancers with the one person just like singing into the microphone yeah (laughs) very delightful (laughs) It, it there was one I watched. Go back a little bit to the like that 50s, 60s style of stuff that we had. Yeah, like the bandstand, like uh, music. Right. Been so used. some people would say it's like, oh, that I would assume that's for like the older generation of Koreans. No, it is popular like across the board. Yeah. It really is. It it's definitely easy. had its lull, but it, it yeah. started to kind of kick back again. Yeah. Well, and. You can see that in the things that you find, like if you're on YouTube searching trot music, and especially if you search like K-pop and trot together, you're going to find videos of like BTS doing trot songs on their stage and like the crowd going nuts. Wild. Because, you know, they're in sequin jackets doing that trot song that everybody Mm -hmm. knows. And they also do it, like, it's very big in, like, doing a nori bong. So, like, if you've ever, like, mm-hmm. watched any sort of, like, variety show where they do go into, like, a nori bong, things that they pick normally are trot yeah. songs. Everybody knows them. It's, like, kind of, like, a generational, like, you could have your, like, entire family, like, from your great-grandparents to, like, younger kids, and they'd all like, have okay. the same song. Imagine if you're in like a North American one and the song Sweet Caroline comes on and everyone goes ba 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 together. <laughs> That's trot, essentially. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And there, I mean, there are more modern singers of it too. Like there's some singers that are more popular and more sort of like young. And like we were saying before, there's collaborations with like K-pop stars or rappers or, you know, different R&B singers and stuff and it mm-hmm. that can add a little extra. It's also always standard um if a K-pop star or group is on a variety show with like older co-host 
that is like the standard they'll usually get them to sing like their favorite trot song or like yeah. do something like you know a little line from a trot song so then everyone's having a good time and everyone's like yeah oh, wow. yeah everybody's yeah. like oh yeah it's that song and everybody's bopping their heads and singing along because they all know it <laughs> yeah. yeah i watched uh, a clip from i think it was called like singing battle or something it, it's just another one of those singing battle shows and uh there was an older gentleman who Leo from Vix was competing against. Mm. And the reason the clip was just kind of hilarious, poor guy, was it's it's kind of set up like American Idol to where you pick a song and sing it. And whatever Leo, he came up with a list of songs that he knew to do, whatever he picked, his competitor would do. So he ran out of songs completely. Like, <laughs> and they kept showing him being in the audience terrified as this guy kept <laughs> singing every song that he wanted to sing and so finally near the end the coach or whoever pretty much asked like hey can he sing a song that's already been sung because he wants to sing like this trot song and they're like yeah 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 sure so then the, it showed him singing this trot song but the terror on his face like as and it was different moments but he would just be like he's not leaving me any music <laughs> like he just had nothing to do and then his coach like in in the training room where he was like, this has never happened before. I am so sorry. <laughs> it was pretty funny. I was watching it. Like, I think it was the uh, entertainment weekly special. And it was mm. like the top 15 or 20 trot songs. So they were like going through like the entire list and like all of the people on the, the, you know, the announcers were like making comments of it. And like, they always just like show clips because they, like, show clips of the song. And so maybe it's, like, so old that it doesn't have, like, a music video. But it has, like, the, you know, concert version. And so, like, they'd show the person. And it's just this, like, larger-than-life human being. And then, like, everyone in the audience is, like, bopping along and singing along. And it was really fun because it, like, went through, you know, all the way to number one. But it was, like, kind of, like, a really good, like, history of it, like... Mm-hmm. being older and then like starting to get like new stuff like Hong Jin Young yeah who's like super popular now and then going back to like older songs they show the song and then you see like just tons of people like singing their versions of it or just like singing it at random so it's definitely like a, a genre that even if it's not like as super popular now it does bring just generations together yeah which I think well, is, like, it's, fun. It's so part of their culture. So, like, for me, I haven't been exposed to Trot a ton, but even just through watching, like, Astro stuff that I watch all the time, because the leader's name is Jin Jin, there is a popular Trot song called Jin Jin Jara. And so, I, I, you know, I'll just be watching an Astro thing, and then all of a sudden they're singing Jin Jin Jara to him, and he's holding his hands up like it's all they're all singing to him, and he does that all the time. And so then you're like, well, what is that? So then you want to go figure out, oh, it's a trot song. It's a huge part of their culture. Of course they're singing it. So it's funny how it, it does, it pervades a lot of things like the variety shows and everything. Mm. It, it can kind of catch you off guard when you're like, I have no clue what that is. Like, oh, it's just another genre that I didn't know about. And there's a lot of, well, not a lot, but there is a fair number of K-pop singers that like have actually released actual trot songs. Yeah. Um, you know, they sung that he likes trot music. He, you know, they sung of Big Bang. He likes trot music. Other songs like crayon pop if you're looking up trot music stuff will come up like super junior t which i'm assuming the t stands for trot that's it does. Kind of yep. Yep. It does. that is what it stands for it's the super junior trot unit and lizzie who i adore lizzie she's got a lot of like the songs she's released are different like kind of jazzy and stuff and then she's got a trot song and yeah I think that's what she did like right after she left after school then there's Kim Young Chul who's a part of like Knowing Bros and a lot of other variety yeah, shows of too. yeah he's the comedian who's like known for having taught English to himself and then wrote a book about it <laughs> <laughs> It's hey, essentially I was, his. I was watching his, his yeah. clips. He's darn good. No, like, he's great, and he's so funny, yeah. and he's so like sporadic and great. Yeah, he's done some stuff um, along with Hong Jin Young, but just really great, really fun. Yeah, one of his uh, music videos 
has a lot of people dressed in various Marvel costumes, which is rather... <laughs> and then all of a sudden there was a Wonder Woman costume. I'm like, guys, that's a DC crossover. We can't do that. <laughs> so they can do whatever they want. <laughs> there was this one girl, uh, I have it listed, Jang Yoon Jung. I think I found her through that, that Entertainment Weekly because mm-hmm. they were talking about how like there was a period where it was just like people weren't, you know, Trot wasn't big in like the media and stuff. And like she had this song that she wanted to a Trot song that she wrote and she didn't want to do it herself. And she couldn't she couldn't get people to sing it because it wasn't mm-hmm. popular. And so she ended up singing it. And it's like this was like 10 years ago. And it's like what essentially brought Trot back up into pop mm-hmm. and for like younger you know, people to be singing trot. And uh, there was this like really great clip because they were talking about it and it was some variety show that she was sitting in where it was like a, like a bunch of international people there um, who all knew Korean and they started singing her song because they literally learned that in their Korean classes. So they all knew this trot song because they were learning it and they're all like, you know, from France and, you know, American. Just it was a really great little like little coming together of like everybody's culture around this one song. And she was there and she had no clue that that was a thing that they were doing. And so like they all just started singing it because it was like their shared experience that every single one of their classes always <laughs> made you learn that song. It was That's really adorable. sweet. Was she pretty touched? Yeah, she was. And she was I mean, like you could tell she was like, I just didn't know this was a thing. And, it, you know, and I think it was like really cool for her because it was also like these these weren't Koreans singing it. It was just r- like mm. a bunch of random international people who knew her song and like it's a music that's part of their heritage and their history. So it's mm. not just like a, a K-pop song. It's you know something that's tied to that, and I think that was like a really great moment for her. One of uh, Hong Jin Young's um, songs. Man, how am I spacing on it? I'll look it up later. But Bye. the music video. Battery. No. <laughs> no, no, neither of those. It's- um the music video was actually really touching it was it was pretty much talking about how life is kind of hard for everybody type thing Mm -hmm. and the music video very much told a story between Mm. um kind of like how work was how work life was hard between she played a character that was going through a lot of interviews and failing them and then an older gentleman who was losing his job you could kind of tell because he was Mm -hmm. packing up his desk and and then how her boyfriend was trying to cheer her up and it was just I thought it was it was really touching I thought which I know I was which one you're talking about and I can't yeah yeah there's also a, like a really great um running man episode because she started like doing a lot of running man stuff but mm-hmm. there's like one of her first um appearances on there uh they had to do this challenge and I can't exactly remember where they were they might have been like on Jeju or something they were like out where it was like out in the country and like they had to either get a bunch of like autographs or get a certain amount of things and so she was like basically they were in a town that like hardly anybody knew who they were because they didn't have tv mm. and so she like just like set up shop and like started doing just like a random concert out and like you know on this dirt road and people came because they knew her songs because they were <laughs> trot songs and so then they were like they were able to like progress in their like whatever they mm-hmm. had to do. And it was a lot of fun. Cheer up was the music video I was thinking of. The, the I was gonna say, video. is it cheer up? Because I didn't yes. have a video, but like I just thought that sounded <laughs> like it went with the song. Yeah, it it was a really well done music video. I, I know I'm a sucker for music videos and I always bring them up, but I, I thought it was really well done. I, I think Love Tonight, that music video of hers is pretty funny. It involves a kitty cat. It was, it was she did it just one month ago so check it out yeah, yeah she just um she's on uh she has like a uh can't really call it a full-time but she's like a full-time cast member of um my little old boy yeah and oh, yeah it's her and her sister who is i have to say a better singer than she is um and hilarious and so funny but the so reason funny that, so funny but the reason she is not uh a singer in korea is because she is a larger woman, so there's more, you know, a little bit of a warning. Uh, there's some fat shaming that happens, but never, never between the sisters. Like yeah. the <laughs> sisters, and they live together, and they clearly like love each other, and their dynamic is to die for. But she's, you really get a good sense of like her personality, and it's like really fun. So if you want to see more of that, 
Uh, that's on Cocoa and Viki. It's delightful. So I, for me with Trot, I don't know if it would... I need to try to introduce it more into just me listening to it without all the music videos. Because I like watching the performances of Trot a lot and the music videos. So I haven't listened to the music separately all that much. So I need to give it a shot. I'm going to take some of the really, really happy stuff to the gym, see if it works. I don't really know. We'll have to see. <laughs> you just like start running really fast. Yeah. Like, it, it, it might be just <laughs> like, as yeah, effective as the typical yeah. stuff that I'm used to. It actually probably would be really great for exercising. Yeah. For cardio and Yeah. <laughs> It'd be a really thing. great like uh just a like a uh, aerobic dance class. Like a Zumba yeah. class. A step I, I that, Yeah. I think that is what gets me though. So even uh Hanjin Young stuff, like you'll watch her performance and then all the all the background dancers are really doing a lot of stuff and like she doesn't move quite as much, which of course she's singing, so like I get it. But it's funny because that's kind of the trot thing to do. Like you'll see other people do the same thing, especially the older stuff. I watched uh, an older gentleman, like a much older song and uh, background girl dancers who their midriffs were showing and full, full nine yard. Uh, they were, it seemed like they were doing zoom in. They were doing <laughs> a lot of stuff. And of course he was standing there <laughs> and it was just, it felt like they were even doing a little extra. It, it was pretty funny. Like I, I had a good time. Curious to find out how many of the like backup dancers are like trainees or you mm. know, mm-hmm. failed trainees or, you know, I just think that would be interesting. You sometimes see when they're talking to like K-pop singers and stuff and they're like, Oh, you used to sing, you know, be a dance up singer or, you know, background dancer or whatever for, like, this, you know, singer or that singer and Mm. find out, like, how many of them were, like, backup dancers for, like, trot singers or something, (laughs) which would be awesome. Like, that would just be, they'd be like, yeah, sure, I know all the moves to that random song that (laughs) most K-pop people have, you know, international K-pop people would have no idea about. Mm. But, like, the Korean fans would be like, what? (laughs) <laughs> I have to say, me personally, trap music, I don't, I like some of it well enough, but like not well enough that I'd be like searching it out a lot. Mm-hmm. But I didn't watch a lot of the videos because I'm like the opposite. I listen to the music, but don't watch the videos. So I did watch like the ones that you guys were clipping, like sending the links to and stuff. And those were great. So <laughs> no. I do enjoy it. Like I enjoy the, the, theatrical performance of it I think it's fun mm-hmm. um, and I can see why that would be popular in Nora Bond mm-hmm. yeah you know sometimes let's be honest the choreo with k-pop is like uh, I'm not doing that it's not gonna happen <laughs> right. so it's been a few years since I could pull that that stuff off the trot choreo is often a little more like hand movements and things I can probably manage. Yeah. yeah. Oh, speaking so. of, I feel like we need to mention two things. Sleb 5, first of all, that's important to mention. Yes. And then the song, I'm Sorry I'm Anuna. We have to oh. talk about <laughs> From Lovely Pretty, Pretty Girls. Song. Yeah, I was searching and I, I was trying to find like, the problem with trot is that it's it's harder to find, especially if you're not just like going for like random clips from variety shows mm. or like really old concerts. Like it's really hard to find like good versions of it or like music videos or just like songs on their own. And I found this group called Lovely Pretty Girls, which I'm pretty sure they're no longer a thing. Um, but they're they were a group that almost primarily all of their songs were trot based and like they kind of like did some bridging of like trot and pop but they were definitely like a trot group that like did the dancing of a k-pop group <laughs> but they yeah. have that one song the sorry i'm anuna and i was like this is very fitting <laughs> <laughs> for us it's our new theme song so thank you trot <laughs> episode i really yeah. like enjoyed them like i i was finding i was really liking their song so that's when I was trying to find different things because I think I really enjoy Trot. I just want to find more yeah. and like not be like some like really bad, like old 
video from an old concert that's really grainy. Mm-hmm. Like that, I think that's the problem. Like, yeah. and, mm-hmm. enjoy Hong Jung Young. Like, I I enjoy everything she does, but like, she's only one person. So yeah. it, it's it's nice to find more of a variety. She's only mm-hmm. one girl. <laughs> do everything. <laughs> As wonderful as she is, she can't do it all. And, and Celeb Five, they're, they're a group of comedian ladies who, a, a couple years ago at this point, I guess, came out with yeah. the Celeb Five song. And they pretend, well, they don't. They actually go around and perform as, like, an idol group. And they even, like, participated in the Idol Olympics this year, too. <laughs> Which was <laughs> totally awesome. Hilarious as the... Uh, the they oldest said ever if, members to compete. If they were going to win at bowling, they were going to shave their head. Yeah. It, it going to be good. They, they didn't win, though. So <laughs> I guess that's a good thing for them. They're like, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I did see they got invited to some prestigious uh, comedy festival in Australia. And they oh, went cool. and performed and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So, like, that was a pretty big deal. I feel like if, if we created music, we would do, like weird celeb five trot versions of things <laughs> like, like if, if we were a musical group we would be a yes. trot group probably yes. yes i think you're right i think so I, I think so at least the trot choreo as you were saying amanda like, <laughs> like, like, i don't know about you guys but i'm like an amazing dancer um, <laughs> um... excuse me excuse you <laughs> no, just so everyone knows i am not an amazing dancer <laughs> Oh, I mean, I can do the basic musical theater stuff, but you know, yeah. I haven't been in a show in a really square, long time. Do the, do the jazz hands, jazz square, yeah. great, great fine, That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, as a little personal plug, if uh, if I get enough Patreon followers, then I will be putting on a dance performance on YouTube. So <laughs> that's that any impetus for people to come join the Patreon. All right, this has been another fun-filled musical episode of The Certified Nunas. Um, We are wherever you're listening to us, but also on Podbean, Spotify, oh boy, (laughs) Google Play, Stitcher, and Apple iTunes. Uh, We now have a Tumblr page. I don't know what's on it. I haven't been yet, but I hear it's going to be pretty tight. We're on YouTube, (laughs) and we're always on Twitter. We basically live on the internet, so please come find us. Uh, (laughs) Listen to some trot. Oh, we're also, okay, we're on Spotify with our podcast, but we also have a Certified Nunas Spotify that has a bunch of playlists so that when we're doing these musical episodes, we have playlists that go along with them if you want to go listen. So feel free and, to look us and up. And YouTube. Yeah. YouTube. Yes, we do the same on YouTube. By we, I mean Jesse does the same on YouTube. <laughs> and, she's amazing, and she's amazing. And Amanda does our other Spotify, and she's amazing, too. So that's uh, that's about it for us, and we hope to talk to y'all again soon. Have a good week. Bye. Bye. Bye.